All right, yeah, take it away. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, we have a long agenda today, but we wanted to start off with some recent updates to the Galaxy Training Network that you may or may not have been aware of. I'm going to share my, wait, John, can I share my screen? Is that a thing that can happen? It seems to be an option. Yeah, one second, sorry. No dramas. Should have. I, now you should be able to. Awesome, okay. So thanks to a lot of work by Delphine and James's lab, we have automated slides to video conversion so we can turn some nice notes Galaxy. into slides, including subtitles, which don't display in this for some reason, but they're there, I promise. It's super nice. It's pretty easy to work with. We could tack it on all of our existing slide format. It was great. Um, it only works for slides though. We'd love to figure out a way to do it for the trainings, but we haven't gotten quite that far yet. Uh, the other feature is the new fancy little button on Galaxy, which some of you may have noticed to see the Galaxy training materials. And within there, we have linked tools. So you can click on them and activate the tool within Galaxy, which is life-changing for a lot of our trainings. We had a lot of issues of, oh, well, which cut tool is it? Or you paste in the tool name and you can't find it via search. So this fixes that for us. So that's been a cool thing. Um, we're also planning a global galaxy course in February. You wanna talk about that? Um, yeah, so the idea here is to um, do a global course. So we were gonna pre-record um, all the sessions. It's gonna be five days, it's gonna be free and open for anyone to join. Um, so pre-record everything and then on the week of the course, we will be um, available in Slack to help people out and everybody, all the participants can uh, work through the materials at their own pace. Um, so manage their own time. So uh, it'd be great if um, people would be willing to um, join the Slack and just keep an eye on uh, if anybody needs some help uh, during that week. Um, another thing that could be nice to think about is um, if we can make at least all the use galaxy dot star um, servers be able to support uh, most of these tutorials so that people can go to the different servers and not all um, overloading one of the servers. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're also planning a global galaxy admin training, which a number of you are involved in in the end of January as well. And that's going to require some creation of videos for students and also is going to necessitate a lot of admin helpers. So if any of you are willing to volunteer to answer questions, we would love it. Okay, with that, I'm going to stop sharing. Have you picked the topics for that course? Which course? The Global Galaxy course? Um, yeah, so this really started as um, like a small local course and then the pandemic happened. So it sort of grew on me, but we have uh, the first day is going to be a, sort of a standard introduction that we often do. Um, just introduction to Galaxy for newcomers. We're going to do some quality control and mapping. Then we have um, a day of RNA-seq, uh, day of single cell RNA-seq. Uh, fourth day is going to be proteomics. So the Galaxy P team has agreed to, to do that and uh, Proteor and uh, Melanie. And then the last day I wanted to make sort of um, choose your own adventure day so that everybody in the GTN who wants to uh, show off their uh, tutorial can, so they can make a video. Um, and then we supply the, all the participants with like, he, he, are the options you could do today. Um, if people don't have time to do a whole video, cause I know it can be time consuming, but they're willing to be on Slack on that day. And we can say, here's another set of tutorials that we know will be supported. And if people want to do any of the other ones, of course, they also can. Um, so yeah, I was hoping to show off. Um, Saskia, you, you used to have a document where, with, with the outline. If yes, I have a program. Do you have that? I have it for it, but I didn't see it. Um, so we can paste that in chat, yeah. And I know uh, Anton has kindly agreed to, to do the introduction portion. And um, 
Simon will do some assembly, he told me today. So I really want to show off like um, instructors from all over the globe. So if anybody here has a training they would like to give on that last day or one of the ones that are scheduled, um, feel free to let me know. Um, uh, perhaps stupid question, but do we have the date set? Yes, it's February 15 to 19. How soon can we advertise that? Um, I was hoping, but it's by Hackathon this week, but I'm going to make a little website with the, with the global outline of the, the program um, and set up a Google form for registration. So then we could, I think, start okay. next week. Thank uh, you. Yeah. And I will, closer to the course, will organize some um, instructor training or helper trainings um, so that people know how to to help out him. So. And I just want to comment that the choose your own adventure idea I really liked, which is why we're also doing a free admin training. I stole it. Um, um, uh, Dave, uh, so you put this on the Galaxy event schedule. Can you link that document? OK. That yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so once it's ready. So when Saskia says go, yes. yes I'll make a little web page, I think, uh, maybe in the GTN or maybe somewhere else uh, with the program, and then we can update it. Um, uh, so I also wanted to ask Alex, oh, are you here? No. I am. Oh, yeah, so you were uh, coming up with this design of uh, web pages for introduction. Are you, are you talking to Saskia and Helena? Uh, I have not been. I mostly have been talking to, to Dan, and this is in relation to a PR that they are aware of, though, or rather an issue that, that, that they have both commented on, if I remember correctly. So it, uh, it's the one, uh, it's got like a whiteboard picture from, uh, from Dan and James and Anton. I got put on that one. I have no clue which issue you're referring to. Would you mind reminding us? I can us? see if I can find it. <laughs> Give me a moment. <laughs> Um, there it is. It was called New Welcome. Overhaul user's first experience uh, on the main one. I don't know that I can share screen. No, that's fine. I can find yeah. it. Yeah. What was this in connection with Anton? That's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to avoid situation where uh, we're doing various training related things and not aware of each other. Good to hear. I can share it's just, a, it's just a landing page when a user first creates an account. So it's like a quick start, get, get into Galaxy and then getting to know the Galaxy community tools mm -hmm. and workflows is a, just a quick intro. Fantastic to hear someone's working on that and it would be Yes, very helpful from a user training perspective to have more graduated introduction than here's the whole thing, have fun. My question, so when you, when you plug in those videos, um, where do they go on the GTN page? They go to an S3 bucket currently. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not talking about storage. I'm talking about where they actually get displayed. Uh, I mean, oh, go to the I introduction. Can, let um, me share my screen again. Page. There is one now for the short introduction slides I made. Um, and there's also one in the admin training. It's just if there's a video icon, it'll appear next to the slides icon. All right. So uh, I have a question. So I'm 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 making a bunch of narrated videos as well. Mm -hmm. I haven't publicized them yet, which is because I want to get some critical mass, maybe about ten. Uh, and so it's uh, right now it's about data upload, and uh, it will be explaining collections in depth. So I'm making about one a day at the current rate. So I'll have substantial amount of them by next week what would be a good place to put them? Of course, we have, so we have a Galaxy video channel. It's called Galaxy, Galaxy Outreach at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. That's the channel. I mean, it's, it's not publicized yet, but that's where I'm gonna be dumping them. 
but I, I actually hate YouTube interface. Uh, I would rather embed them somewhere on the GTN page. Should we create maybe a separate page for videos where we can group them, you know, this is about upload day, uploading data, about collections. About, they'll be very short, they'll around three minutes max. So we can definitely think about doing that. Um, I would have been more against that, except for something Dave said to me the other week, which was, if you call them webinars, no one expects them to be updated. Currently, all of the videos on the GTN get automatically updated whenever changes are made, whenever we update the slides. Well, so we these are, you're them. talking about videos which are made out of Markdown. Yes. But I'm actually making these videos the old way. I understand way. you're talking about something very different. Yeah. The point is they will get outdated eventually. And uh, well, so the new thing here is that before when I was doing this, I was making them relatively long. Right now, it cannot be more than two, three minutes. So if it's a subject which is more than two, three minutes, then I just split it into multiple videos. So actually updating them in a way easier than updating Markdown for me. Anton, can you show one? I think no one knows what what kind of video you are talking about. He said right. kind of Galaxy and talks, I think. I'm pretty sure I've seen some on the Vimeo channel. Uh, here's an example. Uh, one second. Well, you guys continue talking. It will take me a while to find it. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think the concern here is just the naming of what we're calling them, right? Yes, thank you, Dan. Right. Well, so this Dan, is- Call your things webinars or something other than- No, no, no. These, are, these are not webinars. So I think that the automated videos, these are like a little snippets about particular interface elements. Then webinars, that's a whole difference. It's, these are long ones. And these are more of a- we we'll call them webinarettes or something. Or webinar, well, um, shorts, maybe? Shorts. They, used to be, they used to be called quickies, but in the new world, we have to be careful. So let's name Yeah, that's things. not a great term for them. Yeah. I the main concern is just. <laughs> <laughs> I like John's proposal. I second that. What's uh, the John's proposal? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so. We can bike shed the name later. We would be happy to have them. We can definitely come up with a video, a place to put all of these videos that are not automatically updated. Maybe just every paper cuts um, copes go over yeah. them and see if we need to deprecate any or re-record just so they don't sure. get too far out of date. Um, Cause that's the main concern, I guess. Could be okay. Okay. Oh, I hate YouTube. Jesus. Quick dives. Also a good suggestion, Dan. Yeah, that's well, that's what I named the Quick developer dive. ones on Excellent. the but then that's... too much credit to Apple. Quick... No, not quick time, quick dive. Quick dives. Okay. I don't know. Okay. That's what I called the one. Well, I've only made one, right? But I was gonna make some of the developer focused ones. That's what's on the YouTube channel now. All right, here's the one. It's 39 seconds. Good, fits in my attention span. So it's uh, basically, it's basically about, so this is the new front page for them and it's sort of pan-galactic and then it's just, uh, you know, it's just how you do shit. <laughs> Sounds good. And they're all going to be in that sort of uh, time. Uh, they'll be short. So actually, they're easier to update. The problem here is I'm making this mistake again, where I'm bottlenecking stuff on myself. But I like making videos. So that's, so I guess I'll just do it. And I think our long term solution to that is that Freiburg and Oleg are working on automatic video recording. but. Well, the problem, so the problem, uh, and this is something I also discussed with some of you, is that uh, the, the automatically generated videos are fine, but they're a little dull just because of that voice. You know, we can mimic your voice. We can make a nice Anton deep fake. No, I know. That's fine. That's fine. This is, yes, there is a, I don't know how many of you watch this deep fakes from South Park people. Yeah, that was what I was thinking. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. 
it's just, uh, yeah, it's, uh, as I was saying, one of the highest, uh, one of the most successful screencasts I've made was poorly edited. So it was, uh, I, I missed, I, I screwed something up and I was say, saying fuck repeatedly in it. It was very <laughs> successful. I mean, people just loved it. So, uh, <laughs> so that's the thing. Uh, anyway, so my, my only question here is that uh, if, 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 if you can tell me or think of some special page within GTN where I can be adding them because I don't want to uh, just use YouTube interface for that. No, no, no. We can definitely put those, like link those also from the relevant tutorials which cover the same topics. Should be easy enough. So next week yeah. we have the GTN CoFest so we can put it on the schedule for that to, to work on it then. Can we get a raise of hands though on... Uh, this uh, no YouTube thing, like who is who's likely to just watch it on YouTube if it was on YouTube? Like there's a some I mean, kind of reaction. It in the content, people are going to find it there rather than finding it on YouTube. We can still have it on YouTube, right? Yeah, you can embed, embed in YouTube page, in the page. In GTN just for okay. findability. So. Yeah, I think YouTube's great. It's free. There's no. I, I don't. I don't know what the why people wouldn't like it. Google? Uh, who doesn't use a Gmail, though? I mean, yeah, right. that ship anyway, has sailed. Uh, sorry, don't mean to fan in things here. Yeah, we can embed YouTube. It'll be great. Everyone yeah, will be happy. Essentially, if we continue this discussion, we're going to have to make our own silicon uh, because we wouldn't like Intel or Apple or whatever. So it's just. Uh... I mean, we can use the new built-in video format in Galaxy and just host them on galaxy.main, you know? Okay, more bad suggestions for me. So um, back to our agenda. One of the next topics on it was the GTN and Galaxy webhook is nice, but it's probably not the final answer for how to integrate training with Galaxy. And there are surely better ways we can do this. One of the main concerns for us is that workflows don't stay updated. And how can we maybe combine training with workflows in something like how the workflows have a report section? Could we also have a training section? Does anyone have any feelings about this idea that they want to throw out? It's a long-term plan, obviously. Feelings are good. Yes, so, I have a good idea. <laughs> everyone forget their coffee today? So what exactly is the problem with the web hooks? Like, how do you want to extend them or? What's missing? I'm just curious. Just that the training doesn't stay tied to the workflow is the main issue for us. We write a training from a workflow, but then no one ever, no one ever updates the workflow unless we ask them to. Mm -hmm. And we also and lose this connection between this tool with these parameters and here's a textual description of the parameters. If it's some format that's closer, maybe we can generate the list of parameters that you have to set. Maybe. Uh, I mean, it's, it sounds like an interoperability problem. Like, um, I guess you would want to find for a tool uh, workflows and trainings and then sort of integrate that. And yeah. relatedly, I mean, there must, we should have easier ways to update workflows to new versions. I mean, that doesn't seem beyond reach right we, we can we can probably do that at least for like the um like repositories that we trust we can we can probably do that uh, the workflows i mean especially when they're in the testing you know you update mm -hmm. them and if they pass that's fine i mean it's it's a nice hack project i think Okay, no negativity. So extend the tours somehow that you don't have to always. Yeah. You know, test them more, but I don't know how powerful the tools are at this point. 
Yeah. And it's worth a, worth an attempt. So yeah, that's worth thinking about. I know we had talked about it in the past too, using tours as a vehicle for, for walking through this stuff. Um, just never sort of bubbled to the top of the pile, I guess. Paper cuts. <laughs> that's <laughs> more than a paper cut, probably. A missing hand. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about this idea about a year ago at the, I guess at the last biohackathon. Yeah. One thing that came up is that the invocation reports right now are like a document. Um, yeah. It's like one big thing, but the way that you probably want the training reports is like, here's some markdown for each step and probably just the relevant steps, right? And like, um, and then you could, those could be the things you highlight in the tour or the things, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Sort of different paradigm, but the idea of attaching the markdown to the workflow is still really solid, I think. And you could reuse the widgets and stuff. And um, I, I mean, more markdown in workflows is always good, I think. Like. The instructions we can provide today with workflows are very limited. So if we can extend mm -hmm. that, that would be great. Well, if anyone is excited about working on that, let us know. We'd be happy to liaise. OK. If there's a lot of silence on this, then a long, long, long time ago, John proposed that we have a somehow a meta tracking issue for the GTN and our priorities and what we need, what's important to us. I went ahead and made a project board. Yeah, long time ago, John said, hey, maybe we should just say, keep track of our paper cuts and can't promise anything, but it could be useful to help us. So does a project board work for everyone? Also, if we maintain this, will anything come of it? I mean, I will, I, so my, just some background about why I thought it was a good idea is because like a lot of developers don't use Galaxy, right? And so if, if we are fixing issues that we can see in training, then we know those are user facing things. And so they, they would seem to be high priority roadmap things, it, it's sort of like paper cuts, but maybe even they could be a little bit larger. And so, I mean, if you maintained it, I, I, the, the thing I could promise to do is review it before it's like, if I'm still involved in roadmap discussions or whatever, definitely at least, you know, monitor it and, and sort of see what that is and sort of have a better impression about what, you know, a, a broader range of like real users who are not just users, but users who are like, you know, on the ground writing content and building content for users, for other users. Um, so I, I think it's a great idea. Um, I mean, thank you. Thank you for throwing it together. Sure. We're happy to update this at the CoFest if it's going to be useful for developers, if it gets on Anton's radar in the roadmap. So what, what are the big, you want to like walk through what the big issues are right now or? Or tool panel search. Marius, how was, you said you had a bug or you were finding something in Woosh? Yeah, uh, but I'm still trying to get the release out and this has been a bug forever. Um, so yeah, I mean the weights for, you know, we use this multi-weighting thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in some situations when you have a good match, uh, the weight just goes to zero and it's multiplied. So you, you multiply by zero and then- yeah. That's okay. It. So the best match falls out, which is unfortunate. Uh, and didn't have time to look further because that's a huge issue. Library. So yeah. And, and a lot of math. <laughs> so can you replace zero with point zero 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 one? Sorry. Can you just allow zero in waiting? I still so didn't hear it. Now, so that it never gets multiplied by zero. I mean, there is some math problem in there, but it's not like somewhere in the code it says multiply by zero. And I, I don't. I mean, I didn't understand fully what the problem was. Otherwise, I would have taken the note. Okay. EU uh, took all of the weights which we had set to forty and set them to zero point one, and things are, for some queries, a lot better. Multi-word queries especially seem to work a lot better than they used to. 
others work badly, but I don't have data on how they worked before. Um, more visual cues in the GUI for options that are only available when logged in. This is one that constantly catches some of our users. I had an issue where, uh, yeah, someone else was complaining about not being able to rename a history only to figure out later that they're not logged in when they finally got around to screen sharing. All of these sort of things could be, could make our life a little bit easier when we're training. There was another user who had some strange bug about they hadn't had their account confirmation approved yet, and it was approved in the background, but then they tried to run tools in the meantime, and the tools wouldn't run even though they were approved, and they had to refresh their page. And when they did refresh their page, everything worked. And these sort of things have been causing us troubles lately. So those were our high priority ones and updating the, automating the screenshots, but that's an ongoing project I hear. We have lots of low priority ones and some pie in the sky ones like the integration of training or TIA support on all of these galaxies and that sort of thing. We threw this together without a lot of discussion. We'll update it the next CoFest. Hopefully it gets more useful for everyone from there. That's awesome. I think for the, especially for the paper cut kind of issues, it's a good way of, I mean, even those ones are like, that's a very like clear paper cut and good user story. Thanks for putting that together. Yeah, sure. definitely the uh, tool panel search should work. <laughs> we can ask every GTN CoFest, all the instructors, because when you watch someone use Galaxy for the first time, you see a lot of these sort of like little UI pain points. Um, so we can collect them then from all the instructors maybe. Yeah, it's yeah. super helpful. Yeah. Okay. Were these also linked to issues in the core Galaxy repository? Yep. Like if they, oh, okay, cool. Thank you. I don't think I have the board automation or whatever turned on, but yeah, they're linked. Okay, next up is GTN events. We would like to start thinking about synchronizing events. Dave, are you still here? Yes. I wanted to make like um, an events page on the GTN itself and have instructors, because they're already used to adding stuff to, to GTN, add their events there. Um, and then maybe the hub could work more as like an aggregator from different um, places. And I saw this was proposed before by Bjorn, I think. So then like the EU could have their own um, list of events, the GTN could other places. And if we just decide on maybe like a minimum set of metadata um, right. for the, the hub to maybe, how would this work? So should we use the Bioschema's JSON LD as a interchange format? Because we published that already. So tests can consume it. Yeah, that's Do we just want to delegate the entire problem to tests? They collect um, events. I've never actually looked at Tess's events page before. Yeah, so our code yeah. needs to be updated because um, it's not oh. quite a perfect match anymore. But we trust Tess long term, Tim. We just got added to the Tess Club. I know. They're, they've told us they're going to support before it. Before that, maybe. Tess is dying. I don't know. We've gotten a lot of mixed messaging on Tess. Uh, honest. Okay. Um, I think JSON, I think the bio scheme is JSON LD. I don't know. Off the top of my head, I think that's the best way to do this. Okay. So e even if tests get some mixed messages. So, but we need to update our code as well because we we haven't kept up with the spec. But yeah, pulling from GTN would be great. Um, we're currently looking at redoing the website. And so with an eye towards aggregation, and when we were talking about aggregation, we would aggregate events from multiple community sites. Yeah. So for instance, Galaxy Project EU, we could pull in stuff from there. Fantastic. And vice versa, all based on tags. So that's what we're looking at. It's early days for that. So okay. uh, Anton hopes to get that out within the next six months. We'll see. Where's Anton? There he is, okay. Okay, cool. Good to hear that there's motivation for that. That's encouraging for us. 
So while you're talking about events, it might be really cool if while you're just browsing the tutorials, if it said the next time one of those would be presented, right? People don't track that sort of metadata in their event, though. Mm -hmm. but we could you could ask. If we do it in GTN, then we can say, ah, oh, if you know the, the identifier, the tutorials, yeah. your cover, you could do something like that. It'd be a nice feature we can add. How do you envision aggregational work for like other communities that don't necessarily follow right. our standards natively? <laughs> um, let's see, if they don't follow our standards natively, I don't know. Like French um, Galaxy community or something. Yeah, but if we, so a, a couple of ways. One is we're hoping to create a generic platform which will be used by, by the three big use galaxy.star communities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's in the works. And then we're also hoping to create a platform that can be used by use Gal or, or, or by galaxyproject.fr if they want. Okay, but if they don't want, I would say we push the JSON LD format and just say here, you know, you know, just generate this behind the scenes, and uh, that will make aggregation easy. So that's not a, sorry. Go ahead, sorry, please finish. Yes, yeah, so I don't think that's a ton of work. It, okay. You know, it just requires some JavaScript knowledge and yeah, I don't think it's a ton of work, but I don't have that JavaScript knowledge. So maybe it is a ton of work, I don't know. I was going to ask, what did you mean by a platform that could be used by? So hoping to create just a generic software package we'll post on GitHub. And then if people want a look and feel that is similar to the use to the galaxy project dot star um, <laughs> platforms, then they could easily do that. So if you want to launch a galaxy India and you don't want to get your own, um, create your own platform from scratch, we'll have one which will automatically integrate things like events, like people, like yeah. um, all the stuff that's, you know, directory based. Sort of like how we did on Galaxy Europe, except everyone contributed to the same thing. Yes, not that we're stealing ideas from you guys, but yes, we're you. definitely stealing ideas from you guys. So, exactly. Um, so in theory, that will be attractive enough that people will at least consider it. Now there's gonna be people who just hate stuff about certain design choices that are made and they'll just go their own way. But if we can create standards for how to export stuff, then anybody can you know, conform to that no matter what their website looks like. That sounds good. Does anyone want to complain about the trainers they work with? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I expected more discussion on some of these issues. Any, I hear Maine's finally getting around to TIOS maybe. That's exciting. Yeah, Sergey, you wanna talk about that? Um, we are in early stages. Uh, we have our own fork, so we are developing. Uh, it will be the, the grand idea, which is again, still very much not set in stone. The grand idea is to have one code base. Uh, one code base, which will be customizable to hopefully 99.999%. Well, and uh, the rest, I, I, I guess, um, will, will, be, will, will, will be in the config. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I have double noise coming from someone having lunch here. My apologies. <laughs> um, uh, so um, right now we are building, well, uh, Helena has built the Django app. Uh, we are just making some adjustments so that it's customizable because a lot of e EU stuff is hard coded. And also we may or may not have our own requirements for how we accept registrations for uh, training. This is something uh, me, Nate and Jen uh, have been discussing lately and hopefully we'll be discussing it all together very soon with Helena. Uh, and once we have an idea of what our combined needs are, we'll figure out how to generalize the code base. So it's again, it's one, one app uh, to rule them all. That's the idea. Yeah, cool. What's the backend on the .org side gonna look like? 
Uh, the back end, as in the dynamic job destination. Is it, I mean, is it going to be like a separate app or I forget how Tios works? Uh, is it All it does is it puts users in groups. That's literally it. Oh, so they still use EU's main server. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, sorry. We, well, we will be, it is my understanding that uh, our app, the Django app, which uh, accepts registrations and also which, uh, um, what am I trying to say? When the user accesses a URL and is logged into Galaxy main, uh, the app will read the user's uh, Galaxy session cookie and add that user to the, actually create the training group on Galaxy, on, in the Galaxy database as needed. And then uh, we will have a dynamic job destination in place, which will route the jobs created, submitted by this user to, uh, to designated resources. Uh, how that is going to be implemented is something we, <coughs> we will be discussing with Nature. Ow. Yeah, it's long and short. It just puts users in groups and has a registration form. It was intended to be as stupid of a service as could be possibly made, and everyone can make their own choices on scheduling. Sorry, I tried to do my best. I, 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 I have a, a soundtrack in the background here. My apologies. <laughs> okay, continuing to pick on people. Ennis, you said something about having a security lecture for an hour. Uh, when, yeah, it's possible. Sorry, go ahead. When do you think that'll be ready? I'd love to see it before. Um, yeah, so it's being worked on the first half of December. The document we have is going to be, uh, I guess, reviewed and the engagement with trusted CI is not gonna be done until first week or two of January. But uh, I just commented the uh, Anrag, the guy that's largely assembled the document um, is willing to do the talk and put a, a sort of an outline of the talk uh, by early December. I think I wanna say maybe like December 2nd was even the date he suggested if that's uh, a workable yeah that's work. um will there be a tutorial to go with it or just no no so the the idea is i mean there's the 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 document itself that will be made available as a resource to the community but the document is more like a template um, that each site has to customize and yet it's a 60 something page document and so the idea would be to talk about the document in you know in a sort of a structured format so that a, a site when they adopt choose to adopt it um, has a bit of a background why uh, or how to go through the document because it's not really feasible to like do it I guess especially not in, in the context of a training it's a lot of organizational stuff rather than technical um, yeah yeah of course just um, all of the trainings we'll be giving have associated tutorials that people can go back and review at their own convenience and text they can read if they can't understand the speaker and that sort of thing. That was mostly my concern. It's just that everyone can access this. Well, the document will be available uh, okay. once the document is available. Um, but I don't know. I mean, if you have ideas on how to turn it into a training, I, I can take a stab at putting it together. I just, I mean, it's, it's read a document and make a decision. Um, that's the, based on your organization needs um, and, and abilities. So I don't know what. Okay. We can discuss that then whenever it's available so we can have a more informed conversation. Okay. That was the end of our agenda. Really expected more discussion like how far off track we got last last time with the tools but i guess tools is a topic that's a lot more applicable for many of you than training he's right go ahead 
sorry. I did have something that I had discussed briefly in the Gitter, uh, but might be worth throwing out there. I don't know if this is related to who's in the meeting, but um, I have a long-term target to rewrite several, several of our runners. Uh, and it's going to be using a template engine and Galaxy. I want you to use one that ships with Galaxy already. It looks like you guys have three template engines in Galaxy. You have Mako, Jinja, and Cheetah. And I don't know if we want to pick one. They've been working to converge. Is there is there a solution that we're aiming towards? I, in the Gitter, they said Cheetah might be good, but I don't know if that's. I mean, I guess it depends what exactly. I would what, say it's safe to not use Mako, though. <laughs> the Mako is likely mostly going away. Yes. Between Jinja and, and Cheetah, I can't imagine we're getting away from Cheetah anytime soon with all the tools that use it. Um, and Jinja's pretty standard. I don't know. We use it in Ansible and all that. Is Cheetah maintained anymore? I mean, it's, it had a push for Python 3 compatibility, but since then, not much. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah and I mean, it depends on the target. So what, what you want to do with it? Well, the idea is, is that um, the runners will have a template file that can be customized by an admin. So let's say the Kubernetes runner, uh, the Kubernetes uh, YAML document that's submitted to the Kubernetes API can be templated. And then that opens up the possibility for any uh, job configuration, including sidecars and anything, rather than trying to implement incrementally every single bit of the Kubernetes API through runner params. Yeah, I just wanted to say I started work on that. So that, that is in progress. Um, hopefully, in the next couple of days, uh, it'll, it'll be ready for a PR. <laughs> I was actually thinking of taking it a step further with the uh, and standardizing so that uh, I can integrate a Nomad runner and also redo the Docker runner. What uh, template engine are you using for your PR? Jinja, uh, but if we, if we can work on it together, then maybe we can uh, try to coordinate that work and maybe I can push what we have right now or something, or we can just have a chat offline. Sure. Yeah, I would say Jinja is totally safe. Like that's no issue having that as a dependency. It's, and yeah, even if Cheetah's end of life, it's so central to what we need. It's, it will be with maintain it ourselves at this point. There's uh, nobody else has anything else. I have one other idea that I want to throw out there. Uh, I don't know if this is in the greater, I don't know who's involved in runners. Um, the idea of pulling out Galaxy's uh, job preparation and metadata into a sidecar um, so that it can run independent. So it, like it's a, a smaller container in itself that can run before and after the tool container. And it uh, pulls uh, data out of Galaxy's database and pushes it back in while also doing a metadata calculation. Uh, and it, that allows removing the need for a shared file system. Um, Pulsar does this, right? Um, if you submit a Kubernetes job with Pulsar, it, it sends two containers, I mean, it runs two containers um, one, the bio container that runs the job, and then there's the Pulsar container that um, stages the data in, sends the data back, runs the metadata calculation. Um, I would, I, I always recommend people sort of not assume the staging data in and staging data out is an easy, like obviously assumes it's got access to those files. So I really think that that should be built on Pulsar, um, but I, it's a big, heavy thing, and I understand. Like, you know, sometimes you've got to rewrite things, but uh, I would definitely take a look at the the, the Kubernetes Pulsar work. Um, there's a test case in the code, like test Kubernetes staging. I mean, I, I would check out, take a look at that. Um, I think that's the right way to do it. And we've we've 
we've already extracted the library that does the um, metadata calculation and stuff. It's all been sort of siphoned off and packaged up. And so it's got the smallest, the smallest part of Galaxy that it could have um, sort of attached to the Pulsar inside the Pulsar container. Um, yeah, that was like, I'm so I would take a look at that because it sounds a lot like what you're doing. Um, it doesn't talk to the database though, um, would be the one difference. Uh, try to sort of we're also, I mean, that, that's also on the roadmap, getting the part that is prior to actually, uh, I mean, the, the part that takes a request and turns it into a job, that part is also something that we could put and process uh, on a message queue, right? So that's also something that we could push out of Galaxy. Yeah, there, there, there is an issue. I'm sure I have an issue. I worked on this for a year just on the other side, the metadata calculation and extracting that out of Galaxy Core. I think the, the, the inside piece also could be extracted. It's a huge project to do correctly though. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is part of a project we wanted to um, be able to take CW, no, Galaxy workflows and make them into CWL workflows. And so that requires like taking everything to do with the calculation of of the command line and the parsing of the tool and the, the all of that stuff and making that a node in another workflow engine. And so that really requires doing that. And, and so there's work in progress on that and there's an issue on that, but um, I, yeah. It's a Sean, is, thing. Is there a way to unify this uh, across the Kubernetes runner and the Pulsar runner? So we can use the same uh, two, two container staging i i mean i i think that you should just use pulsar <laughs> I, I mean uh, the the way to unify them is to extract all the common functionality i think out into that the the the, the pi cube library and put as much as you can there um i and then like i mean with pulsar you have the option to turn off whatever you don't want i think right um nate's not on to like contradict me, but um, so it, it should be a superset of what you can do with the Kubernetes runner. Um, so I, I don't know, that's my, um, that's my extremely biased opinion, obviously, but um, yeah. So how, how does the sum of this, uh, like at the slightly different level, like a lot of effort is being put into iRods uh, and iRods has the, like the object store plugins. And then this whole um, two container job pods that are resolving their own data. How does those two, like do they overlap? Is it one or the other? What's the, the fit between this? Um... So the, the two container job pod ships the Galaxy object store. And so it, 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 whatever the underlying object store does to stage the data and can be done on the container. Um, and so I think it would, I think it would lend really nice. I don't think there, I don't think iRod's breaks anything in that model, I think it would, I think it would work just fine. Um, but, but it doesn't, so, so in that world, so the, uh, the, the two container or the object store from Galaxy would just, we would just use the iRods, um, configured, uh, configure iRods and iRods would do the data transfer between an object store and the local file system. Is that the architecture there? Yeah, I would imagine that. I mean, I, I obviously haven't put those pieces well, together to verify they work, but I think I, from a Galaxy architecture standpoint, I think that should work fine. Um, and if it doesn't work fine, it's a bug and we should fix it. Um, so as a follow-up, is there a, I mean, can we, is there a reason not to adopt Pulsar then as the standard job uh, runner and push everything into Pulsar? I mean, the, the only, I mean, at this point, the Kubernetes runner is more, it's got more eyes on it, right? Um, but I mean, Nate's now using the two container job pods for the ITs on main. Um, so they, I'm sure they'll get, figure out a bunch of bugs there, but it, it seems like the superior way to do Kubernetes um, because now you've got a way to sort of put some logic on the, on the remote node and it's logic that's well tested and fits with Galaxy and yeah I mean the 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 only the only reason why you wouldn't want to do that is because the Kubernetes runner is better tested uh, or because um, there's too much overhead 
And if, if the overhead is really a problem, then let's like figure that out and work on um, simplifying it and not simplifying it, but like get the performance better. Um, but I, I, I would, yeah. I was wondering about all runners in general and just have Pulsar as the key <laughs> interface. I, mean, I, I would love that, right? Uh, Nate and I talk yeah. about that sometimes. Uh, there's, yeah. yeah. I, in general, uh, Slurm, PBS, et cetera, there's a Pulsar backend for all of those, right? And so, and Pulsar can just be started up right inside of Galaxy with the embedded Pulsar runner. Um, so it, it's not even really, doesn't even sometimes, I, I don't know how people envision Pulsar, but part of it is just like a client library for, or not even client library, it's a library for staging the data in and out um, and, and sort of creating abstractions for saying like, this, these paths go here in this way and that, that way. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it would be nice if all runners were Pulsar runners. Um, it's just sort of momentum that prevents us from doing it. From a design perspective, if we were starting over, obviously, yes, they would. Um, but, yeah. I mean, so all the, the command line interface runners, they are pretty much the variants from Pulsar slash we import stuff from the Pulsar library for that. So, I mean, those are almost there, right? We could easily move them out. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we should move in that direction. I don't know. It's, it's just a sort of legacy, you know? I mean, the nice thing with, with a lot of the runners is that they are community contributed. So in a sense, I mean, if we create one migration and show how to use that with embedded Pulsar, that might be a way forward. If we want this to happen, then we don't want to spend the work ourselves. Yeah, I, I also think yes, that, but we also probably should be using embedded Pulsar or something on, on main and U and stuff, right? Like we should, you know, uh, I mean, I, th I think Nate, Nate's not here, so I can just put words in his mouth. Uh, you know, he, he agrees that all runners should be Pulsar runners, right? But it's, we, we haven't done the work to make that happen, even on main. Great segue. Thank you, John, would be, we need more training on that how to use this new embedded Pulsar. It would surely be helpful if someone would write some admin training on that. Well, Nate's not here, so it's fine. Nominate <laughs> Is Nate the only one who can do this? I, uh, I think so. I can't say no right now. That's right. <laughs> yeah, just looking at all of your faces, I would love to see more contributors to the training materials for the admin and the dev section specifically. There's lots of developer education that we could be doing and we could be highlighting there that we'd love to do. We just need developers to start contributing to that. And is, it, is it completely out of the question that we would do it in a way that there's nothing to configure? Like we just make the switch and that's it. It's a good idea. I mean, not everything needs to be configurable. So if you know one of them is better and there is no regression, then switch it. I mean, we've we've done that with a couple of things. So I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's feasible, but if it is, then maybe that's the way to do it. Because why have something configurable if one of them is better? Yeah, it's a good idea. I think perpetually these admin configuration things don't, they just don't make the roadmap, right? They're not, um, but it would be nice to spend some time working on that. That's a good idea. Well, I think we've only got a couple minutes left, so we should probably wrap up this conversation. Thank you all for joining. If you are a trainer or involved in training, please let us know. Um, if you're available to help with the admin training or the Global Galaxy course, we would love to have you there. Please, again, let us know. You can do that in the chat here or on Gitter. If any of you care about training, please come to the CoFest on the 19th of November. We'd love to see you and have your input on 
how we can make some of these improvements to Galaxy that we need? Anything else from your side? Yeah, we'll get some paper cuts written down for next week. Um, Helena, can you stay on that call? I just want to yeah. talk face no to problem. face. Thanks so much for presenting and thanks so much for coming, everyone. Thank you. Have a good Thursday. You. Bye.